Matt from the Man Cave, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. With your daily devotion for what? August the 31st. What does that mean? Golly, that thing flew. It means this. It's the end of the month. September is tomorrow. What does that mean? Winter's coming. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but I love the seasons. I love summer because I like to get a good tan. I love to go swimming. I love to go to the lake. I love all those outdoor activities. Hiking, swimming, kayaking, everything I can do. I'm doing it, man. But I also love the winter. Man, I almost pulled the cord out. I love the winter, okay? Because here's the thing. I love snow. I love to be just snowed in. Fireplaces going. Have a big thing of soup there on the stove. I mean, awesome, huh? And you're like, Matt, why are you telling me this? Why? I don't know. I was just talking. Come on. We're buds, aren't we? Aren't we buds? We're in the man cave. Can't we just talk? You know what I'm saying? Me and you just talking and just discussing and fellowshipping. I mean, if I came to your house, you know what I'm saying? I I'm not a monk. You know what I'm saying? I like to eat steak, have a baked potato. I like to go do see clean movies, okay? I like to have fun in Christ. Hey, welcome to the man cave, baby. You guys, today we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 38. We're looking at verse 5. It reads like this. It says, go tell Hezekiah. Go tell Hezekiah. Guys, here's what I want you to do. Pause real quick. I want you to say Hezekiah 10 times real fast. Hezekiah, 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 Hezekiah. <laughs> Do it. He says this, go tell Hezekiah. Who's going to tell Hezekiah a word? Isaiah. Go tell Hezekiah, thus saith the Lord. When you hear that, it's a done deal. Okay, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add unto your days 15 years. You're like, golly, that's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. What's going on here? Isaiah comes to Hezekiah. Hezekiah is king of Israel, okay? And God says this through Isaiah. Get your life in order, straighten out, because you're going to die. <laughs> you know, you're like, what? Yeah, Isaiah tells him, God says, thus saith the Lord, you're going to die. Say your goodbyes, get your house in order, line up the next for the throne, okay? But what does Hezekiah do? This is such an amazing story. And I want you, in your leisure, to read this in the Bible in its entirety. Hezekiah, it says this, that he puts his head against the wall, he rips his clothes, he puts sackcloth and ashes on his head, and he cries out to God. He says he leans his head against the wall. What is Hezekiah doing? Okay, first he's mourning before Almighty God. You got to realize there's certain things that trigger God. Okay, that's going to trigger a response from God. One is what? Humility. What's another one? Faith. What's another one? Trust. Enormous amounts of trust in Him. What's another one? Watch this very carefully, okay? Humility. Okay. A broken and contrite spirit. That's what Hezekiah has. He's not ignoring it. He's not trying to figure out how he can live. He's putting his head against the wall and he's crying out to God, which is what? He's creator. He's savior. Okay? He's everything. He's going to the person who can fix the problem. He's not trying to figure it out in his own strength, his intellect, uh, who he knows, going to the doctor, doing all these things. He's going to God, and he's pleading his case before God. What is he pleading? He's pleading his life. Y you mean like Matt, he's pleading for his life? Oh no! He's not pleading for his life. He's telling God the way he's lived. A lot of people ask me, watch this very carefully, Matt, is it really that important to live a life of righteousness, a life of holiness, a life of separation from the world and the things of the world? Does it even matter if I'm a Christian? Uh, and the answer is yes. Well, how do we know that? Throughout Scripture, there is just evidence after story, after event that takes place in the Bible. And because a certain individual was living a certain way before Almighty God, God acted on their behalf as He would not do for that person who isn't in right relationship. Hezekiah is leaning his head on the wall, and he's basically telling God a story. He's saying, Lord, do you remember when I did this? Do you remember when I did this? Do you remember how I've been living? Do you remember when I wanted to do this, but I knew it was against your law and your ways, and I did not do do it and I forsook those things. Do you remember when I chopped down these idols? And he goes over all of these things. He's just pouring out his heart. God, I've lived righteously before you. Does it not matter? Is, is it mean nothing to you? And here's the thing. God, before Isaiah, gets out of the courtyard, gives him a word. Go back. Tell him this. Tell him what? Go tell Hezekiah, that is the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayers. I have seen your tears. Surely I will add 15 years to your life. Well, uh, I know a lot of people when they hear this text, they think, well, golly, did God change his mind? God didn't change his mind, okay? What, what, what took place? God changed his method. Hezekiah one day is going to die. 
Okay, he is going to die. It's just not going to be then. Do you understand what I'm saying? God doesn't change his mind, but he may change his method or he may delay. Do you understand? God's delays are not God's denials. Watch this very carefully. When we're experiencing all these blessings of God, you know what I'm saying? We're just enjoying the pleasures of this life and everything is going in the right direction and we feel the favor of God. Everyone in the house is healthy. There's more money than we need, okay? I mean, just across the board, we are blessed children of God. Listen, listen, listen. When everything's going good, we don't often question God, do we? I mean, when everyone's healthy, we got a great job, we're in love, oh, we're in love, we're in love, we're in love. I mean, just everything seems to be hunky-dory. I mean, you know what I mean? We're not questioning God. We're just like, but you're the man. <laughs> I mean, don't we do that? We're in the man cave. Hey, don't, don't, don't pull the spiritual hat on me now. Oh, holy Joe, give me a break. When I'm doing that, what I'm doing is the incense thing, you know, because they have this incense thing on like a chain and they think they're all holy on those r rituals, okay? And they're false religions. They make me sick, okay? Serve the one true God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. That's a freebie. Let me get off that. Tracy's waving me off. Go, go, go. It's a good devotion until you went off on the Joe thing. Okay, I hear you, Tracy, okay? But when everything's going, and good we're not questioning God I mean honestly I mean are we questioning God God you know I'm really too blessed I think these blessings are maybe going to get my attention away from you somehow we're not doing that but why is it when God allows pain suffering and sorrow sometimes not all the time maybe into our lives we question his wisdom we question him so guys here's the thing He's elated to hear this, but he says, you know, he's just like me and you sometimes. He says, I need a sign. Prove it. Well, Isaiah's standing here. He just told you you're going to die, and you believed him. That he told you you're going to die, but now he says you're going to live, and you don't believe him. You need a sign. I would have, me personally, I would have said, prove it. Pr prove I'm going to die. Now, I want to just absolutely make sure, Isaiah, that what you're speaking is from God, Okay. Okay, but he believes he's going to die. He believes the word of Isaiah here. But now Isaiah says, you're going to live. God's adding 15 years to your life. And, and it's, you know what it is? It's too good to be true. 15 years. I don't know how, how old Isaiah was at this time. But 15 years was like adding maybe 40 or 50 years to your life when you're already 60. You see what I'm saying? You've already lived a really good life. And you may be 55 or 60, even if you are 40. Hey, 90's not too bad. Because he says this, hey, give me a sign. And here's the thing. I, I love this. That God takes us right where we are. I, I, you know what I'm saying? Was it wrong? Yeah. Take God at his word, okay? Because that brings what? Brings glory and honor to God, okay? But sometimes we don't, and many times I haven't. Do you understand what I'm saying? I want a sign. Show me. Prove yourself, okay? Did I, you know, and a lot of times with you and I, what it is is, Lord, did I hear you? Because see, no one's knocking on the door named Isaiah uh, wearing leather, okay? And, you know, and has the headband there. It has a, a, a thing of oil to anoint me. No one's knocking on the door like that. And so oftentimes, what am I hearing? I'm either hearing myself, I'm hearing the enemy, or I'm hearing the spirit of the living God, okay? And I'm always questioning, who, who said that? Was that me? Because sometimes it's so good and it's so wonderful, we can't believe it. And we're like, prove it, Lord. If what if that was truly you, will you will you confirm it to me? And even after he confirms it, because it's so good, we still don't believe. How many of you, you better post it. How many of you have gotten a word from the Lord, okay? You just couldn't believe it. God confirmed it, but you still didn't believe it. Post those comments there. I am real interested because it's happened many times. God shared something with me. I was so elated. I was so on high. I'm on K2. I'm on Everest. I'm holding the American flag. I'm sucking down the the O's, the oxygen, okay? And he proves it to me. But why is it I still can't believe? Why, why is that sometimes? You, he just proved it without a measure. I mean, oh, oh, you know, the only thing that could prove it more is if an angel standing before me, flopping his wings, say, hey, I'm Gabriel, I just came down. You know what I'm saying? Guys, we got we, we to gotta honor God. And how do we do that? By believing him, trusting him, walking by faith, not walking by sight, okay? Hey, let's give Hezekiah the benefit of the doubt, okay? Isaiah says this, I tell you what, you know the sundial that's out there in the courtyard? And, and I, you know, Hezekiah's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, I'll tell you what, do you want God to move it forward 10 degrees? Or do you want to move it backwards 10 degrees? Would that prove it to you? And he says, well, the sun's always moving forward, so that does me no good. You know what I'm saying? It's going to go forward whether you do anything or not. How about we make it go back 10 degrees, meaning the sun goes backwards, okay? NASA has confirmed that this has happened. Now listen, 
NASA has confirmed that we went back a certain amount of time. This happened twice that we, that's written in the Bible. Once was with Joshua when he's fighting and he needs more time to kill the enemies of God. Okay, and then there's this time. Okay, so it goes back 10 degrees. And he absolutely believed. Why did God give him that? Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hezekiah had to believe before he was going to be healed. Oh my goodness, did you just hear that? Hezekiah had to believe God's word, so he confirmed it to him. You have to believe, or God's not going to do it. You have to trust, or God's not going to do it. So he shows him a miracle. Hezekiah does believe. Isaiah says, three days from now. Now, Hezekiah is really sick, okay? He's really, really sick, okay? I realize Hezekiah is sick as a dog, guys. He's down and out. He feels like death warmed over, okay? But Isaiah says this, in three days, you're going to go worship in the temple. W what does that mean? You're going to go to the temple and be praising God for the healing that's taken place in your life. A lot of us watch this, guys. You're like, Matt, what are you doing? I'm worshiping. A lot of us receive from God daily. Guess what we forget to do? What? Oh, let me think. I don't know. Uh, we forget to worship. We forget to be what? Thankful. We forget to be gracious and have a heart full of gratitude towards who? Towards God. We just are consuming all of the blessings without giving any utterance of praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God. Don't just be a consumer, okay? Praise Him for everything that He's done in your life. That's a freebie. Guys, you're like, well, Matt, what happens? Tell me what happens. Hezekiah, he, he's healed. He goes to the temple. He says, thank you to God. He worships. But here's the real question. What happens? What happens is this. Do you remember when he got the news that he was going to die from Isaiah? And he put his head against the wall. And he starts crying out to God. And he says, Lord, have I not been living in righteousness? Have I not been living a life of holiness? Have I not been doing everything that you asked me to do? Not perfectly, but I've tried to the best of my ability. And yes, I've, I've, I've made some mistakes. But I tried to make them right. And I've been going forward with you. Right? Was that not true? That's absolutely true. But watch this. God spoke 15 more years into his life. Three days later, he's in the temple. He's praising God. He's saying, thank you. Guess what happened? The next 15 years, he didn't really live for God. Are you hearing me? I mean, before, he had lived that life so he could lean his head against the wall. And he could say, Lord, I've done all this. But God granted him 15 more years. But with those years, he wasn't living for the Lord. Those years were kind of a train wreck. He was disobeying God an awful lot, okay? Meaning, if he died when God originally said he was going to die... It probably would have been a really good thing, okay? And you're like, how can you say that? Because here's the thing. He had a proven track record, okay, of being a great king, okay, of Israel and serving the living God. But now when we look at the latter 15 years of his life, he's not serving God with the same devotion, with the same passion, with the same zeal, with the same heart. It's almost like he's guaranteed 15 years and he can live like a hellion. He's joining up with Ahab, making sure ships, okay? God destroys the ships because you can't have light and darkness. A house divided cannot stand. But it's just mistake, mistake, error, sin, darkness, all of this, okay, is concluding the end of his life. And what started out wonderful ends up as a train wreck. Guys, Hezekiah was given a second chance. But he, he threw it away. I mean, he, he just basically spit in God's face. Because he did not honor God the same way he did the first 15 years or the, the beginning of his life. Now he's doing his own thing. I, I, I'm wondering, and I'm going to put out a question to you. A lot of us have been given second chances. What have you done with the second chance that you've been given? Are you, have you straightened up? Have you cleaned up? Have you repented of that lifestyle that you were living? You know, because you were living like a hellion. You were living for yourself. You were living in the idolatrous world that we're in, doing your thing, me, myself, and I. I mean, here's the thing. I don't need to go over it. You've heard me go over a million devotions about that, okay? And you've been given a second chance. You've been given a second lease on life. Boom! That's the old. What are you going to do from here forward? Hezekiah, he train wrecked himself. A lot of people, they forget this. It is not how we start. It's how we finish. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. And if you've served the Lord, 
grandiose for you. You will be rewarded above and beyond anything you can imagine in this life and in the next. Here's the thing, it's real easy to talk about Hezekiah and to judge that guy, but we're not really talking about Hezekiah today, are we? We're talking about King you. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about what are we going to do from this day forward with our lives, with our choices, with our decisions, with our lifestyles, with our family, with our church, with our jobs. This day forward, how are we going to act? What are we going to do? Are we going to finish strong? Are we going to finish first? Are we going to cross the finish line? Or are we going to falter? Are we going to throw the towel in? Are we going to follow the things of Satan, the world, and self? Friends, it's up to you this day. But I say this. As for me and my house, oh yeah, baby, you know what's coming. We're going to serve the Lord. Hey, hope this helped you out. This is Matt from the Man Cave.